Hey everyone, welcome to a very important grip video. For those of you who are very well versed with our videos on grip, please fast forward to the last 10 minutes of this video. For those of you who've never seen our, vi our grip videos before, I highly recommend that you last the duration because there's some very important information in the first 20 minutes of this video. We know it's a long one, but it's very nicely detailed. It's extremely important. So you really get to see the functionality of the video. And we will know when we watch our comments at the end, we will know who knows our stuff. So be warned in advance. Hey everyone, Sean, Munashe, Savannah, we have a historic video for you. And dare I say historic because that's what we do. We like to be historically correct because we really, really have done our homework on the situation. I remember about 12 years ago, I did a video on uh, using the ground and the pumping of the legs. Mm -hmm. And you see how it's really becoming prominent today with George Gankus and, and with a few other teachers that are showing you how to use the ground properly. Well, we were doing that over 15 years ago and we did, you know, specific videos on that on YouTube over 12 years ago. So I invite you to go check out some of those. Our grip videos have been super detailed. If you go to our original uh, grip on uh, our grip video called grip and wrist hinge. That was with a lesser quality camera and microphone when YouTube was just starting out, but there's over 500,000 hits on that, if not 700,000. That was an oldie and a real goodie. And then we went to knife the grip to show you how the trail hand, you know, yeah. using the knife in the kitchen and how to apply pressure to and through what you're trying to cut for your trail hand, uh, the bottom hand. So the left hand, if I'm, I'm a left-handed golfer and the right hand, if I'm a right-handed golfer. And then we put them together mm -hmm. with the greatest video on grip ever, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that was with the Clementine. So now we get to the most important video on grip ever. And the first thing we're gonna show you is purpose mm -hmm. of the grip. The second thing is how it allows for proper loading and unloading of the arm unit, namely through the wrists. And then we're going to show you how important it is on directing the momentum and the force in the, in the direction that you want the ball to go. Mm -hmm. And so we've got three uh, uh, very nice analogies to demonstrate. So Sav's going to demonstrate your average household hammer. Mm -hmm. Very important. I'm going to demonstrate tennis and Munash is going to demonstrate baseball. Now you were, you grew up with cricket and soccer. Yeah. And, and basically in cricket, there's a very specific way that you're holding the paddle so it doesn't fly out of your hands. And it's yeah. heavy too. Yeah, it is very heavy. And uh, he's never played baseball before. Wait till you see his baseball swing. It's so instinctive and it applies so directly to golf. And then Hey, you got to stick around because we're going to reveal a very important aspect of everyone's perception about the grip. Namely, this girl right here, uh, the last video that we put out is, uh, has been garnering a lot of attention, Sav. Yeah, a lot of comments right? about my grip. We, we, we showed how Sav was now flying her 7-iron 180 yards. And everybody freaked out. They go, oh, it's because of her super strong grip and how she delofts the club and everything else. Mm -hmm. But it's not what the data is showing us. Mm -hmm. So instead of me going, oh my God, I'm ruining my daughter's golf swing because of her strong grip. Yeah. I went the other way, exactly the same way I went the other way with that ground pumping video, right? The ground forces. Mm -hmm. What is it about your grip that makes it so performing? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to reveal. <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. Munashe is going to have a second camera for all of you getting a front row seat on our premium channel. We're taking good care of you guys. Now, if you want to see 
the, the floating camera, it's going to be very, very, uh, it's going to have very detailed looks on the grip from several angles. And if it's Munashe demonstrating, Savannah's going to be on that camera. So we have a nice floating camera that's going to go around. So you're going to see both of them moving around. And, um, and after that, you know, so we'll demonstrate those three analogies. Then we'll, we'll show you how it applies to golf. And it's going to, it's going to be very important for you to stick around throughout the whole duration because this information is absolute gold. Okay. So Sab, we're going to start with you. Munashe, you can get rolling with the camera. Okay. And, um, now if you've got your, your regular household hammer, um, now, Savannah, you're right-handed. Yes. So if you were hammering a nail vertically into a board, how would you set up? So you can see right now that the two bones of her forearm, the radius and ulna, are stacked on top of each other. And if you look in your anatomy book, you just Google it, you'll notice that the bone structure is tubular and triangular. So the compression downwards is amazing. So this is how we compress stuff. Now, if you were to hammer this way, notice what she just did, right Moo? Come on over here. So this is Savvy hammering down. See the alignment of her forearm. And this is Savvy hammering through. Now, you notice she didn't move the hammer or turn it in her hands. Now, most of you, are doing this to play golf. Now, Sav, does that feel powerful? Not as. Not as. Mm -hmm. You could hammer the nail. Yeah. But if you really needed to drive that nail one shot into the board, wouldn't yeah. that be the way to do it? Yeah. So notice how she did that. This would be considered a strong position for the right hand. Yeah. But we rotated not just the hand, we rotated the whole forearm, yeah. right? And as you're going to see later, it's actually a rotation of the whole body. So if you were going to hammer that way, mm -hmm. so hammer down again, right? Now, just with that lead hand, go ahead and get ready to hammer that way. Thank you very much. See that position? And that's what everybody is seeing from her grip positioning and they think this is way too strong but if you put it in the context of hammering a nail in a direction that you want to drive it into well this seems now very very natural doesn't it yeah. now put both hands on the club so notice as you're hammering down you can see from the front here let me put it in front of the camera notice how the hands are parallel to each other Right? So if you put it face on right here, move. All right? Now, if we go this way, and there's the Savannah grip. Yeah. And that, by the way, is the grip of many players on the tour. Look at Paul Azinger, Bubba Watson. I mean, there are dozens of major winners that use this grip. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can see that the way that you're driving it is very specific. Yeah. Now, when you're hammering down on it, Okay, what are your wrists doing? Aren't they hinging. hinging or cocking, if you will? They're hinging up and down, and that's where the anatomical snuff box is located, right here between the thumb and the index finger. Mm -hmm. And you can see that her hands, when you're hammering down that way, notice how your hands want to face each other naturally? Yeah. So you wouldn't put the hand like this no. to hammer down. No. That doesn't fit, does no. it? Okay, and you wouldn't put it like this <laughs> no. to hammer down. No. Right. Yeah. So notice how instinctively you take that to hammer straight down. Yeah. And you notice now when you want to hammer that way. So show me a very powerful body position to hammer that way. Notice how she tilted this way, guys. Mm -hmm. Notice how the whole body responds to that. So hammer down powerfully. So notice her, her body's very level. Mm -hmm. Now hammer through powerfully. Notice now this lead shoulder is much higher than the trail shoulder. And notice how her tilt is accommodating for this position of the hands. More on that later. Very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sav. You're welcome.
Now, if we were going to do some tennis. So you'll notice in tennis, there are several philosophies on grip. And if you were doing a tennis serve, um, you know, uh, Milos was, you watch him taking his tennis racket, it looks like his face in the sky, but then he's coming through at 130 miles an hour, right? So, and, and you look at a lot of the, if you look at a, a topspin forehand, the grip changes inside your hand to be able to lag properly to do that topspin. You can't do tops from, from here. So if your racket isn't positioned properly, if you wanted to do some topspin, you would have to do a lot of body and arm gymnastics to be able to do that. And at one point, your anatomy would max out. So that's why the tennis racket is going to be turned. You ask any good tennis player, they have several different grips. So if I'm doing a topspin backhand in tennis, that's where you're going to see the similarities between tennis and golf. So if we look at like Sav, when you're, when you're doing your tennis uh, backhand, yep. I mean, if I wanted to do a topspin backhand, I wouldn't do it like this. No. And I was certainly not bow my wrist to get that tennis racket to, to shut yeah. because then I would really injure my wrist in the process. Yeah. It's way easier to turn the racket in my hand. And now when I'm coming through, you can see that the position of my arm is super solid, right? The solidity is here. If I'm punching, I'm not going to punch like that. I'm going to break my wrist. Mm -hmm. So the the driving force of that punch is very, very solid throughout. Everything lines up. Your anatomy has to line up to drive that force. So we're doing the same thing here in tennis. So when we turn the tennis racket closed, it gives us the ability to come through with a lot more power and being more behind the hit. Yeah. So you really see in, your, in the tennis instruction videos, and, and I have a picture of one right here from Top Speed Tennis, there's where you have that really solid strike with that tennis ball. So if we look at in the golf swing, so if I, if I did it if I, as a lefty, it would look like this. So a really solid, this would, this would look very close with a neutral grip. And then when I get behind the hit, notice now that club face doesn't look so closed anymore. And if you look at the alignment of my wrists, this is a very powerful position that's allowing me to drive in that direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now Munashe, yeah. come on over here. Here's another way for you guys to, to feel how that, um, the hands are positioned on the golf club, namely the bottom hand or the lead hand, right? Yeah. So if you were going to use this bat yeah. and you had a big, um, you know, punching bag yeah. and you wanted to drill the bat into the punching bag. So imagine the punching bag is right here where the GC quad is yeah. and you're going to bat about that height. Yeah. Show me in slow motion what that would look like. If you really wanted to pound that bag. There we go. So notice he's collecting the bag here and he's ready to drive through the bag, right? Yeah, yeah. Notice the position of his hands. See how both wrists are hinging beautifully yeah. right there on those snuff boxes, right? Yeah. And now when you want to go that way, ah, right. look at that nice tilt yeah. and look at now of the, the positions of the forearms. So notice the radius and the ulna mm -hmm. are now driving in that direction. Yeah. Same for here. Right? So now this is a very powerful position to drive through that bag with. And notice how that trail elbow is not fully extended yet. No. Yeah. And notice how the mass of your body instinctively is behind the bag. Yeah. So if we look at how you're holding the bat right now, come on over here, Sav, let's go a, a little on this side. Stay right there, move. Yeah, okay. Stay in that, uh, that there we go. So notice how the bat is going through the hands right now. So you can take this hand off. 
All right. Now the only difference between this and a golf grip is the golf grip will have the thumb on top. You're hinging on that snuff box right there. And notice if you were to open your hand slowly, look where the baseball bat is passing pretty much at a right angle between, you know, your forearm yeah. and the handle. Now it'll change slightly with a lot of you, but where would you grip the baseball bat now? Right? So just grip it normally okay. where you feel like you can just apply the best and most force possible through the bag. This one. Good. Open that back up, take that off. That's where it is for Munashe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we were to take a golf club now, yeah. hold the golf club the same way. Sorry, it's not a lefty, Yeah, that's all right. but that? notice this feels very solid for you, right? Yeah, it does. Put the other hand on. Now go to the top of your backswing. Now notice right here how that hand is nicely wrapped. See where the, heel pad of the hand is, it's right on top of the grip and this is airtight. Doesn't it feel like super solid? Yeah, it does. Okay. And notice how his wrists are both hinging on those anatomical snuff boxes. Now, many of you think this is a cupped wrist. It is far from that. This would be a collapsed wrist. That's cupped. Yeah. Notice how the back of this wrist is now bulging this way. Yeah. But when both wrists are hinging on the snuff boxes at the top of the backswing, this is anatomically sound. So we got to look at the anatomy of the, of the grip of the hands to make this proper. Here, grab me, let me, let me put a left-handed club in your hands yeah. so that they don't get messed up with the club face. Okay. Good. Awesome. Right? Yeah. And there's, you know, a slightly closed face at the top of that backswing. This is, this is where Munashi hits that sweet little draw. Okay. And you'll see this club face. So if we look at club face now, let go slightly. Okay. This would be a very closed face. That's where you see Savannah in. That's where you see Dustin Johnson in that position right there. And you can see it from that angle there too, you guys. Now let go slightly. Okay. I'm just going to turn it in your hands. Okay. This would be an open face that feels differently balanced in your hands right now, doesn't it? Yeah. So for those of you going from a very open face like this, now do it your normal grip. Okay. There we go. Look at that. So you notice that's, that's Munashe's normal grip. So that feels very differently balanced in your hands. Yeah. For many of you, this club face will feel so strange that you think, that there's something wrong, but there's nothing wrong. It's just when I hold the club like this, it feels a little bit more balanced than if I hold it like this right now, it feels like there's a lot more weight mm -hmm. of the club in my lead hand. Yeah. And that will feel when you hinge at the top of the swing, see how close that is right now. Yeah. That feels very different than when the club is pointing towards the ground. So for many of you, when the club points towards the ground like that, it feels properly balanced in your hands. But in relation to swinging to the target, it's atrocious. You're off the planet in a left-handed case like you, you'd yeah. be off the planet to the left. That's right. So the way that you're gripping the club and the relationship that you have between your hands and the club yeah. is conducive to, to you going that way. Yeah. So if we were to compare that baseball swing you just did yeah. to your golf swing. Yeah. So hold your club right out here in front of you. Okay. And I'll do the same thing right-handed. Now we're going to close the face about 45 degrees. Yeah. yeah. 30 to 45. That's perfect. Okay. Now take your backswing. Okay. Come on in just before impact. How come your club and my club are square now? That's because yeah, the hands always lead yeah. the club. So you go here with your hands straight out in front of you, but at impact, your hands are going to be there. They're leading the club, just like they lead the club with a sword yeah. or show me slow motion back into that bag. Look at this. See how the hands get to the bag first? 
then the handle of the bat, then the meat of the bat. That's the sequence, right? Yeah. So you would never do this to hit the, to hit the bag. Why do you think you're casting the club? Because you're going after the ball instead of collecting the ball here and releasing it to the target. Right. So the functionality of that grip, take your grip now, and show me that same exercise that we just did. So really close that address, that's it. Back swing, slow motion back to impact, yes. So notice the hands lead, then the shaft, and look at the face. We're collecting the ball here. The ball's going to compress against that face. It's going to ride on the face for a little bit, then come off the face there when the club face is just ever slightly closed for the draw. Right. And for the fade, you would collect slightly open and release slightly open for the fade. Right. That's the dynamic aspect of a proper grip. So number one, you hold the club in a position where it feels super solid. Okay, and if you were to put the other hand on right now, yeah. So here's where that knife, the grip comes in. Notice how that index finger, come on over a little closer here, Sav. So notice how that index finger is nicely hooked on here. So if Mu was gonna push against my hand, see how that index finger is applying that pressure? Yeah. Notice how your lead hand is actually pulling back this way. Yeah. And notice how these fingers right here, the ring finger and the middle finger, mm -hmm. are leveraging against this index. Yeah. So this whole hand and these two fingers are leveraging against that. Yeah. The overlap that you have are keeping the hands together. So you're either overlapping or interlocking. We'll see this a little later in the show. So the overlap is the way you bring your hands together because you've got meat hooks, yeah. right? And so when you're applying that pressure, go ahead, we're collecting the ball here and then releasing that pressure in the direction you want the ball to start. Right. Fantastic. Now you notice how the, that leverage was also rotational leverage. That's right, yeah. Beautiful. So when you're hitting that baseball, this is extremely important to understand that rotational aspect of it. So show me after the bag. So do a normal, normal baseball swing, rip right through there. So without letting go. Without letting go, okay. Notice his hands, they had to turn over. Yeah. If your hands didn't rotate over, you'd basically break your wrist, right? Oh, yeah. So if you, were, if you were gonna check that swing, you would have to slow everything down to protect your wrist. If you go hard and keep your wrists from, from turning over, yeah. they'll, they'll break. Yeah. So the natural rotation of that anatomy is really, really important. Yeah. Here's another way I'm going to show you through a tennis serve. Yep. Munashe, thank you so much, man. No so if I'm doing a tennis serve towards you, now imagine uh, I have a bamboo shoot above me. Here's my sword. Did you guys see my rotation? right? I can't go through and then stop. I'm going to hurt my arm. So the, the blade has to keep going and it has to avoid me. I don't want to embed this blade into my leg on the way through. So there's, this is how you self-preserve at the same time. So we take, if you want to see this in action, go see Pete Sampras. Uh, search Pete Sampras pronated serve and you're gonna see this beautiful action going on. Well, it's the same thing in golf from underneath. Notice how that same pronation occurs if I let it. I'm not trying to guide the club, that would be me holding on to it. So that's why when you look at a serve in slow motion, it looks like they're literally gonna split the tennis ball in half for a fraction of a second and then it releases through. So we're collecting the ball from here, releasing it into the service box. That's the dynamic aspect of baseball, tennis, and carpentry, okay? So stay very close, stay tuned, and this is really important. Now we're gonna show you the discovery that we made with the pseudo or the perceived strong grip 
that's holding, you, that's holding so many of you back. Because all of you out there, a lot of teaching pros are going, no, no, neutral grip. We want to avoid that hook. And they're barking up the wrong tree. So it's important that you understand how this applies to your golf swing so you don't avoid something out of fear or perceived defect and you can actually use the grip that's going to provide you with incredible results like Savannah, like Munashe. Munashe is now releasing it so well that he's carrying the ball 320 yards with his driver and his club speed is up to 125 miles an hour, where just a couple of months ago it was 110. And I felt like the king of the family. No longer the case. I'm at 115 to 118. I'm still maxing out there because I did that a long time ago. I'm very efficient and I'm still well above my average in my age group. And Moo is now blown right by me because, you know, he's a young, strapping, solid looking guy, right? So we'll see you right in the bit. If we were to look at the movement of those hands and how it directs the power in the direction you want it to go. This would be downward. So if I'm doing a karate chop, I'm going downwards. If I want to do it in this direction, watch what happens. So see how my body has to move in a way that would promote the force moving in that direction. Notice the position of my elbows. So is this a strong grip really? It's not. It's anatomically aligned. The grip is anatomically aligned. So if we look at hammer, anatomically aligned. This is your neutral grip in golf. But look at where we're directing the energy with it. Whereas, this is how you would direct the energy that way. Where are we hammering the ball to in golf? We're hammering it in that direction. So this is the proper alignment anatomically to go that way. Same thing in baseball, what you just saw with Munashe. So if I'm bashing down on something with this baseball bat, it would look like this. So notice how my hands are moving up and down. But if I want to go that way, I'm waiting for the pitch. Here it comes. So notice now I'm a lot more behind the hit and look at the alignment of my anatomy. So just look at footage of a baseball player and that's exactly what you're going to see. So same thing with tennis. Now in the golf swing, this is what we perceived as a strong grip. So Sav, come on over, over here a little closer. So if I were to take my neutral grip, with my square face and I'm moving toward the target. That would be very open. If I close the face and then I bring it back with only my hands. See how my shoulders kind of scrunching up and I'm staying vertical on the ball. This is a grip that would be too strong. I've got all kinds of tension here running through my forearm and the relief, if I want to relieve that and I relax everything, see what happens? That's why you would hook the ball too much. If you're using a grip that's way too strong, see that? And if especially if I release at the ball. So if I'm releasing at the target, it looks like this. So now watch the difference. Moving toward the target. There is no difference in the way that my hands and arms feel. So this is very closed with a neutral grip. Now I'm going to direct the energy toward the target. Now I can move toward the target. So notice my low point still there. And now it feels like I can move in the direction of my target. So look at the alignment of my anatomy. It allows me to move in that direction. So I am collecting the ball from here. See how solid my hands look? And I am releasing my ball in that direction. So facing you, coming at you. So this is very closed. 
Now I'm moving in your direction. Still moving in your direction. Look at the top of my backswing. See the, the alignment of my face? My wrists are hinging on those snuff boxes. Moving towards you. Moving towards you. See where I am now? Look where my elbow is in front of me. Look at the delivery. Look at the club face. That's not too closed. I'm collecting the ball here. Doesn't look too closed, does it? Releasing the shot towards you. That's how it works. So after that release occurs, after the fact, after the ball is gone, that's what's allowing Savannah, that's what you see, you see the super strong grip of hers and you think she's gonna hook it off the planet. Savannah hits fades, power fades at will. Anytime she needs a fade, it's right there for her. So that does not, those, that situation doesn't equate to what you perceive as that very strong grip. And for those of you who've been with Wisdom in Golf for a while, you're going, of course not. Because you, you, you get it. You understand what through the ball is. So I have a very close face neutral grip. And then I'm directing the energy toward the target. Toward the ball. Toward the target. That's where you get lag, compression, energy in the direction of the target and there's literally 30 yards difference between at the ball with because if you're neutral with a square face the only way it's going to come back to square is if you extend down here early extension casting all that stuff happens with a neutral grip square face and having to release at the ball. Now, for those of you who think, oh yeah, well, what about bowing the wrists? Now, this bowing of the wrists, yes. Here it comes, bow the wrists. Okay, so I've squared the club, but now I'm in a very compromised position if I don't have the strength or the skill or the, the athleticism to respond to that. Brooks Kepka does, Dustin Johnson does, who the hell looks like that? 99% of us, right, don't have this, you know, we're not gym rats and we're not training every day and we didn't hit balls every day from this age. I started when I was 12 years old. That's fine. And many have started later on than that. And you'll find that the more, if you look at the grips that are stronger on the tour, like Matt Kuchar, Webb Simpson, Paul Azinger, Hall of Fame guy, Bubba Watson, there's so many solid players out there. And one that looks very close to Savannah, if not the same, is Brendan Steele. He's got this mega super strong grip, and at the top of the backswing, that face is pointing toward the sky, just like Dustin Johnson. Mm -hmm. He can hit the fade at will as well. David Duval, you watch his grip, super strong. Played a power fade his whole life. John Daly, super strong, plays a power fade. So, I hope this helped dispel important myths, you know, and, and misconceptions about how the grip works. And we can all get to a place where we can move through the ball and toward the picture. We can collect the ball from here like a hockey player. Why do you think a hockey stick's got a big, you know, bow on the, on, on the face? It's a big curve on that blade because we're collecting the puck from here releasing the puck out there. High ally has a very bent basket, so we can throw in that direction. If I want to throw a ball, why do you think I'm hooking that finger around the ball? You see that, right? So now when I'm throwing in that direction, see how the elbow leads the hand? If my finger was straight right now, the ball would just fall out the back. But because my finger's wrapped around the ball, it can now go that way. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're wrapping the face around the ball so that we, when we move the anatomy in the direction we want the ball to go, we can collect the ball from where it is and release it in that direction. So 
This grip would be too strong, especially if I'm going at the ball. That anatomy alignment does not fit if you want to go to the target. However, this functions beautifully with me moving in that direction. So, hope you appreciate that little piece of historic evidence for our game. And we'll see you in our next video. All the best. Oh, and one more thing. What? If it wasn't working for me and I was hitting shots, hook central, right. then I wouldn't be doing it. Exactly. Because you wouldn't be able to play golf. You wouldn't be exactly. able to perform. And we, the whole we, point is the score. Why would I be doing that if I wasn't? Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like I've been doing this for 35 years mm -hmm. and we literally have a stadium full of people that speak through our mouths when we say something. So when you think that something's up, take the time to digest it properly. Go check out a few more of my videos. Really, really understand where we're coming from and it might change your mind. And just try it yourself. Well, just yeah. to experience it. I know, but you, you can always lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? So there's going to be some of you out there that, uh, that just don't want to know. It's just like, no, I've never seen that before. No, I'm fine. I'm just going to do what I'm doing. And that's okay. It's but totally just, fine. Just leave me do my own thing, okay? Well, yeah, they, of course, they don't, they, they don't have a choice. Uh, yeah. They're going to let you do your thing. And, and that's how you're going to be a competitive two this year, two mm -hmm. handicap. And next year, we're going sub-zero. Yeah. Okay, we're going to the plus side. That's the goal. That's the goal. And then and then after that, hey, let's let's play some tournaments and see where that ends up. Yeah. We'll see you in the next one. All the best you guys.